Alright. Time to get back in it. So we were asleep. And we'll see Samantha shift in her bed, turning this way and that. Though it was cold outside, it felt unbearably stuffy within the four walls of her temporary bedroom. She drifted in and out of sleep, her uneasy dreams filled with sinister, shadowy figures. Where was Lillian? Samantha tried to search for her, but she could not find her, though she was sure Lillian was there somewhere, hiding just out of reach. It was Lillian's absence that tormented Samantha more than the strange creatures born from her overactive imagination, and it was that which made her cry out as though she had stumbled through the empty void. She didn't want to be alone anymore. She was tired of being alone. She wanted... She just wanted to see Lillian, but she could not, not even within her dreams. More like nightmares. Samantha often had nightmares. She could not remember the last time she'd had a pleasant night's sleep, and awoke into a new day, feeling even slightly refreshed. Instead, she kept odd hours and always felt exhausted. Her sleep was, inevitably, either a gulf of nothingness she could not remember, or an invitation for her brain to conjure up plots more sinister and convoluted than those of other gothic novels. Lillian. Samantha awoke for perhaps the third time that night, Lillian's name dying on her lips. Her eyes fluttered open. The room was dark and it was hard to see. Samantha lifted her head, looking around her surroundings. It seemed like the others were asleep. Even Georgia was laying in bed, hands folded on her chest like a corpse in a coffin. It must have been late if even Georgia Byron had finally succumbed to sleep. What time was it? Samantha didn't have a watch. She would only lose or break it. And there wasn't a clock in the bedroom, so she did not know. Samantha sat up, supporting her body with her arms. Her whole body ached, and her head pounded. She looked to the window, but the curtains were drawn. Oh, well, look at her. She's adorable. Suppressing a yawn with one hand, ghostly wide in the darkness, Samantha got uneasily to her feet. The floorboards creaked underneath her, as though reprimanding her for being awake at such an hour. Roberta, lying in the bed beside Samantha, mumbled something incoherent in her sleep, but she did not stir. Silently, or as silently as she could manage, Samantha walked towards the window. Her motions were unsure, footsteps shuffling, not just from exhaustion, but from trepidation, too. Having only just awoken, everything felt unreal, and the world seemed to swim before her eyes. Samantha was not entirely convinced she was truly awake, even though she could feel the cool wooden floor against her toes, making them curl. This bedroom was strange and unfamiliar, with its sparse furnishings and empty cupboards, and it was not very welcoming. It made Samantha feel like a stranger, and in a sense, she was. Samantha did not only feel like a stranger in this room, but in her own body. As she drew the curtains by the window, she marveled at her hands as they obeyed her commands, as though they belonged to somebody else. What was Samantha Taylor Coleridge, really? We're not going to admire this amazing view. <laughs> she was nothing more than a few collected memories stacked on one on top of the other, and some ephemeral emotions. The rest of her, her face, her arms, her legs, her newly cut hair, was nothing more than extra baggage, an unwieldy mass of flesh she had to drag along behind her. Samantha stared out of the window, eyes searching, blinking inside the cage of her skull. The sky outside was dark, but streaked with umber. Though the windows were closed, she could faintly hear the sounds of birds chirping amongst themselves in the boughs of the trees outside the hostel. It must have been about four in the morning then. Samantha wasn't entirely sure, but that seemed like a good estimate. Samantha and Lane awoke on a many a sleepless night, enough to tell. What's that sound? Sounds like somebody digging a hole. This They were supposed to get up at half seven. There it is again. For another fun session of being subjected to Miss Pope's sadism. Even though Samantha felt sleepy, she didn't know if she'd be able to fall asleep now. Not on her own. Instead, she foresaw a long three and a half hours of tossing and turning in her bed, like a person buried alive underneath the ground. Oh, 
That's what the sound is. It is shoveling, with only her anxious thoughts to comfort her. This was no good. She was in no mood for thinking. Not right now. Her head hurt too much. Samantha closed the curtains once more and turned on her heels. She looked at Roberta laying in bed, her lying in bed, her hair gathered up around her face and secured in place with strips of paper. Roberta's hair wasn't naturally curly, was it? Samantha could remember upon her first meeting with Roberta, her hair had been perfectly straight, falling down to her waist. She had not started to curl it until she was in year eight. Though it was silly, the sight of Roberta's hair made Samantha feel distinctly nostalgic. She almost felt as though she had returned to the days of her childhood, when she had been a stranger in the corridors of St. Mary's, and, had she, and she had missed her home. In those days, Samantha had spent a great deal of time with Roberta, and she had not known a girl such as Lillian Wordsworth existed in the world. Had Samantha been happier back in those... What? Pre-Lillian days? She was not sure. Though she had not been anxious about Lillian back then, she had been anxious about other things. No matter what happened in Samantha's life, she always managed to find things to worry about. I'm sorry, Bobby. Samantha apologized to Roberta underneath her breath, then approached the other girl. She walked quietly with soft footsteps like a cat, but perhaps there was no point in attempting to be considerate, not given what she did next. Roberta! Roberta, wake up! <sighs> Roberta mumbled something under her breath and turned her head away, her brow furrowing. Samantha was undeterred. She reached forwards and gently shook Roberta's arm. Roberta! Roberta! Huh? Roberta yawned, one eyelid opening softly, slowly. For a few moments, she looked distinctly... Cyclopean? Oh, Cyclop... Okay, with one eye open and alert, but the other soon followed suit. Sam? What is it? I, um... Now that Roberta was awake, Samantha suddenly felt guilty for waking her. <laughs> she held her hands together, wringing them at her front, and looked at the floor. I... I'm sorry for waking you. Well, that's not a good start. I know it was wrong with me, but I couldn't... Okay, you were going to finish that that off. What do you mean? What time is it? It's so dark in here. It's, um... I'm not sure. It's four in the morning? Four? Or maybe five? I don't know. Jeez. What a pain. I know I'm a pain. Please forgive me for being such a thorn in your side, Bobby. I just... I had a bad dream, and I don't know if I'll be able to get back to sleep again. To tell you the truth, I... I feel a little shaken. It was true. She could feel sweat gathering on her brow, as though she was suffering from a fever. So you're saying you can't get back to sleep? That's right. Even though fatigue was evident on Roberta's face, she still had enough energy to roll her eyes. <laughs> I like how we're not going to be able to see Roberta's pajamas with the bears on them. What are you, six years old? I'm 17, actually. Look at that, we finally got an age bracket for these girls. <laughs> so, yes, 17, probably 17 and 18. I know that's stupid. So what do you want from me? I was, um, I know this might sound silly, but I was wondering if I could share your bed for a little while. It looks more inviting than my own does right now. These beds are tiny, Sam. I can hardly fit in it myself without adding you two. But she's so small. I know, but we used to sleep together a lot when we were little. Don't you remember? Of course I remember. How could I forget? You tossed and turned all night like a paraplegic octopus. <laughs> I've lost count of how many times you woke me up by jamming an elbow or a knee into my side. I understand that feeling. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I've always been restless. I think I was even more so back then. When Samantha and Roberta had been young, new arrivals at St. Mary's, they were placed in the same dormitory, their rooms directly opposite one another. Samantha had been plagued with homesickness in her small, cramped bedroom, miles upon miles away from her large family, and had been, able to, and had been unable to sleep. Instead, she had stayed awake and gnawed on her fingernails throughout the night until they bled and stained the inside of her mouth bright red, as though she had been snacking on cranberries. If only, It had only been two weeks into her stay at St. Mary's when Samantha had finally caved 
desperate for company and had gone to see Roberta. Samantha needed to be around other people to relax. She couldn't do it when she was on her own. With no other voice but her own to listen to, she slowly drove herself mad, running unanswerable questions and anxious thoughts through her head over and over again, like thread through a sewing machine. Samantha had not known Roberta very well at this point, but she had known that Roberta's shoes always shone, and her uniform was clean, and her nails were light pink, like the inside of a conch shell that filed neatly. Something about Roberta was comforting, almost maternal, even when Roberta had been only eleven, and Samantha trusted her sensible schoolmate more than she had ever done her real mother. That was why, in the middle of the night, when the sky was dark, Samantha had slipped out of her room and knocked at Roberta's door. Their initial interaction had set something of a precedent in their relationship, as it was always Samantha who turned to, turned to Roberta for comfort, for company, for help. Roberta never asked Samantha for favors, partially because she knew Samantha was unreliable, and partially because Roberta did not need others to resolve her problems. She was more than capable of taking care of herself. She did not, however, seem to mind taking care of Samantha. Samantha and Roberta had shared one room and one bed countless times, though this nightly ritual had stopped once Samantha turned 13. Roberta looked conflicted for a few moments. Her long hair pulling about her, splashed across her pillow. I'm not sure about this. Why not? We used to do it all the time. We did, but it has been a while, Sam. A good four years. We're both a lot bigger now than we were then. There won't be enough room. I know, but can't we just do it once more? For old times' sake? Why do you care about the old times all of a sudden? You didn't seem to before. I... I... Samantha's face twisted just like her fingers did as they gripped the hem of her nightgown. Shameful though it was to admit, Roberta had a point. Samantha was only asking this favor of Roberta because Lillian had left. Maybe she really was being cruel to Roberta. Maybe she had been taking her for granted just as much as Samantha often felt Lillian did her. It was no small wonder Roberta had been so angry with her earlier. Even now, hours after their row, Samantha could still remember what Roberta had said. Samantha had not been a good friend, and she did not deserve Roberta's affections. She should not have woken her up to begin with. It had been incredibly presumptuous of her, not to mention selfish. I'm sorry, Bobby. I shouldn't have disturbed you. If you don't want me, I'll understand. Oh, Samantha. What is it? Samantha's back stiffened. She did not like it when people referred to her by her full first name. The three long syllables felt distant and lonely, furthering the real Samantha from the superficial outside image. Samantha far preferred the epithet Sam. It was shorter, simpler, and conveyed far more affection. It was friendlier, gentler, dearer to her heart. Maybe Samantha didn't like her name because her mother had chosen it. Roberta sighed, exasperated, and brushed a strand of hair behind her ear. How can I turn you down now when you look at me with such big eyes? I would feel cruel. But you... you don't need to bow to my whims. I was behaving like a spoiled child. Perhaps you were, but I'm used to it. You always do, and we have known one another since we were children, after all. But aren't you sleepy? I am sleepy, but, given somebody just woke me up, I doubt I will be able to fall asleep again. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You're just fishing for reassurance now. <laughs> Perhaps. Samantha giggled softly, one hand held against her breast. Was she truly that transparent? Roberta rolled her eyes. Now stop standing there. Get in. I'm getting cold. And with that, Roberta shuffled back in her bed and drew back her duvet, leaving a free space for Samantha. Well, if you don't mind having me, it will be something of a tight squeeze, but I can manage. She had managed numerous times before, even though Roberta did find Samantha some, something of a tiresome bedfellow. She had been woken one too many times in the past by a gasped cry or an errant elbow, thanks to Samantha's fitful sleep, frequently troubled by nightmares. Roberta sighed. She really was too nice for her own good. Just make sure you don't fall asleep in here. If Georgia wakes up and sees us like this, she'll tease us mercilessly. 
I'll keep that in mind. Oh. You, this does not even... These people look completely different now. Oh. Or is this like them as children? Oh no, look, there's the bears. With Roberta's blessing, Samantha slipped into bed by her side. Just as Roberta said, it was a tight squeeze, given the bed was rather narrow, but there was enough, just enough room for both girls. The bed was warm, and Roberta covered Samantha with the duvet. She felt as though she had been enveloped with a loving embrace. This is pretty nostalgic, huh? Indeed. I feel as though I've reverted, reverted back to the days of my childhood. Technically, we're still children. Not for much longer. That's right. Samantha frowned, adverting her gaze from Roberta's face. She would be 18 on October 21st. The thought was somewhat frightening. Samantha had always enjoyed her birthdays when she was younger, when her father and her siblings had been there to celebrate with her, but now they were nothing more than a chore. And I feel that. Birthdays were nothing but a grim reminder that she was growing even older with each passing year and still had not achieved anything worthwhile with her life. Not like Lillian had. I don't feel any different than I did when I was a little girl standing outside your bedroom door at night, wondering whether I should knock or not. I still feel just as small, insignificant, and unsure of myself as I did back then. You may feel the same, but you have still changed, Sam. You really think so? Of course. I can tell. For one, you were less hesitant about waking me up this time. <laughs> Samantha laughed guiltily. Forgive me, Roberta. It's only because we have known one another for so long. Then should I take it as a sign of our closeness? If you wish. Well, even though I don't like being woken at such times, I can't say I'm entirely unhappy. Are you sure? I'm sure. Being relied on is nice in its own way, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. You're welcome. There was a small silence as the two girls looked at one another. It was so quiet one could have heard a pin drop. Samantha blinked slowly, picking out Roberta's features in the darkness. She had not seen Roberta with her hair tied up like that for years, and it transformed her. She looked younger, somewhat, somehow, with her, her curls falling around her shoulders. She wasn't wearing makeup, either. She must have wiped it all off before she went to bed. That was a very sensible, Roberta-esque thing to do. Samantha rarely wore makeup, but if she did, she had no doubt that, that she would forget to clean it from her face and smear mascara all over her pillowcases. At least it was one less thing for her to worry about. Forgive me for asking such a sensitive question, but I have to know. Roberta's voice, soft as a whisper, eventually broke through the silence. Even before she finished, Samantha knew what she was going to say. Her heart constricted in her chest as though being bitten into by thorns. She did not want to be confronted with such a query, because she did not know how she would reply. You are seeking my sympathy because you could not have Lillian's, aren't you? I... Samantha swallowed. Though she disliked being alone, she also disliked awkward conversations like this, where she was forced to reveal flaws in her character she did not wish to admit to not even herself. Samantha was far too fragile. A handful of harsh words, not even necessarily cruel ones, could destroy what little remained of her ego, scattering across the ground like broken glass. I'm sorry, Bobby. I really am. Roberta clicked her tongue against the roof of her mouth. I thought as much. Are, are you mad at me? There was a long pause. Samantha breathed in heavily, afraid of the response, and then spoken softly like an exhale of air. No, I'm not mad. You're not? No. I had already prepared myself for such a response. You were mad earlier, though. Because I was stressed. I was not truly mad at you, but Georgia. I should not have said those things, even if I did, and still do, believe them to be true. I'm the one who should apologize, not you. I know you well enough, Sam, to understand how you feel. When you get fixated with things, you are unable to tear yourself away from them, even though they may cause you pain. Roberta heaved a heavy sigh. So what did Lillian say to you earlier? Nothing revolutionary. And yet, even as she tried to sound nonchalant, Samantha could not keep the encroaching sniffle out of her voice. 
She said, she said she was no good for me and I was no good for her. She said I was too clingy and, and our relationship was unhealthy. And she said I should go and see a therapist. Hmm. This all sounds perfectly reasonable. Of course it was reasonable. Lillian is always reasonable, but that's the problem. She's so reasonable she's incapable of seeing how her words affect me. Or maybe she doesn't care. Maybe this whole time I was just deluding myself. Lillian is never going to like me. She was right. We really are too different. But I... You still like her? That's right. In fact, it's even more than that. Much, much more. Samantha winced as though her heart were breaking, and perhaps it really was. A sharp pain shot through her body, coursing through her veins. I love her, Bobby. I love her so much. I think about her all the time, in almost every single waking moment, and even my sleeping ones, too. She has become such a large part of my life, I do not think I could be myself anymore if I did not love her. Even now, even though she hurt me so much, even so, I can't stop myself. I still love her. Shh. It will be alright. You'll forget about her in time. That's what I told myself too, but three months later I still haven't. I can't. It's not possible. I... I care for her too much. Don't be silly. There is nothing that you can't do. You just need to believe in yourself. But that's the trouble. I can't believe in myself. I have no faith in myself at all. I can only hope when I'm with Lillian. She... She gave me a purpose, Bobby. A reason for living. After I met her, I forgot my worries, like waking from a bad dream. I forgot about my home, family, my father, and could only see her instead. But you were only friends. You may have been best friends, yes, but it is nothing more than that. I know that. Not to her, at least. But to me... What do you mean? I mean... Th though you are my friend, Roberta, and I love you, the love I have for Lillian is different. It's always been different. But what about Simon? Don't you have feelings for him? Who's Simon? The mere mention of Simon Fricker made Samantha's blood run cold. At least it helped calm the rapid beating of her heart and curb the tears gathering in her eyes. She wanted to forget Simon Fricker, the brother of Roberta's beau, Edmund. Simply recalling his face was enough to make her shudder as though she had stepped barefoot on a slug or a snail. Samantha did feel somewhat guilty at her initial reaction of disgust, given Simon had not been an unpleasant person, not by any stretch of the imagination, but she could not help it. Simon doesn't really have anything to do with this. What do you mean? He is your boyfriend, isn't he? I haven't spoken to him in three months, Bobby. You hardly spoke to Lillian these last three months, yet you are still devoted to her. Yet, I can't explain it. I just, I don't have any feelings for Simon. Then why did you agree to go out with him? To see if I did. I thought maybe I might. There was always a chance, and you are sensible, Roberta. I trusted your judgment, but... It did not work out? Not entirely, no. I, I'm not upset about that, anyway. Only a little bit. I don't really think about it anymore. You think only about Lillian? Yes. It's always been her. Only her. But why? Why do you say you love her when she is so cold to you? I know I can sometimes be harsh on you, Sam, but I am nothing like Lillian. I... I don't know. I can't explain it. Love isn't the most rational of emotions. If it were, many great plays and poems would not exist. I just think she... she's so worthy. She's better than me in almost every single regard, and I love her for it, because she is superior. She's beautiful, she's talented, she's industrious, she... she's everything I want to be, and everything I cannot. You envy her? I do envy her, but that isn't all. Though it hurts being so utterly inferior, I'm glad Lillian exists in my life, and I was given the opportunity to know her. In all honesty, I 
I feel like I don't deserve her time. Maybe that's why I cannot hate her for being so cruel to me, because it seems only natural. You're so silly. Friendship shouldn't be a case of deserving one another. You should be equals. I know that, but I can never think of myself as equal to her. Not now. I love her. Too much for that. I... I really am hopeless. So... Your feelings for her aren't just a friendship. I don't think so. But you're not sure. Not entirely. I mean, I don't really understand myself very well in this. I, it doesn't make it any easier. But I... I think I really do love her. Otherwise, why else would I feel so terrible? Samantha peeked up at Roberta anxiously, her long lashes fluttering. She had never before confided the true nature of her feelings towards Lillian to Roberta, and was somewhat anxious about her response. Roberta always seemed so serious and straight-laced. Samantha was afraid she may judge her. She certainly seemed to judge Georgia, and always wrinkled her nose whenever Georgia gloated about her encounters with pretty girls in clubs. Roberta looked confused for a few moments. She was frowning, just as Samantha had feared. Bobby? But when Samantha uttered Roberta's name, the concern eventually faded from the other girl's face. She did not back away, not that she could have done, given there was no room, nor did she ask Samantha to return to her own bed. Instead, she continued to hold Samantha, her chin resting atop her of her head. It... I suppose it is a little surprising, but it makes sense. That might explain why you have always idolized Lillian so much, even though she can be so cruel. So you... you don't mind? I don't mind. It isn't really any of my business. Simon might, though. I don't want to think about Simon. But he thinks about you. He really likes you. I wish he didn't. I wish he hated me. That would make everything a lot easier. Not that Samantha particularly cared about Simon's feelings. He was nothing to her, occupying a space in her brain no bigger than a pumpkin seed. I do not know why he likes you so much either, given you were so difficult. It must be because you were his first girlfriend. Oh, yeah, that can do it. <laughs> Please don't say that. I wasn't his girlfriend. But you did sleep together. It was just an experiment. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> and you say Lillian can be cruel. You know, if we lived in an earlier century, you would be married to Simon right now, with a child on the way. Back then, wayward girls like yourselves who slept with men before marriage had to face the consequences. Well, it's a good thing we don't live in an earlier century, because that would be utterly miserable. Just thinking about it was depressing. Who are you to judge me anyway, Roberta? You've slept with Edmund and you were not married. No, but I have been dating him for more than a year. I genuinely love him, quite unlike you and Simon. But you're still the one who introduced me to him. You should take some responsibility. <laughs> I did it to cheer you up. I thought you might come to like him, given time. Simon is a sweetheart, and you need somebody to be nice to you. He is a sweetheart, but I can't love somebody simply because they are sweet. There was no attraction, no connection, no... no anything. He was not even familiar with Kant, Roberta. Your criteria for potential partners really is odd, Sam. Only you would rank a general knowledge of German philosophers as being more important than kindness. Please don't tease me, Bobby. Anyway, I don't like him, and that's the end of it. I didn't like him before we slept together, and I don't like him anymore now that we have done. Is that because of Lillian? Maybe. Roberta sighed. You really are obsessed. You follow her around like a lost puppy with a wagging tail. I'm not surprised that you fell in love with such a distant person. It suits you perfectly. You really do enjoy making yourself miserable, after all. Samantha pouted, prodding Roberta in the side. I do not need to hear that right now, Roberta. I feel... Samantha paused, trying to think of a suitable way to describe the tumult inside her head, but she could not. It was impossible. 
Eventually, lamely, all she could do was settle with the distressed and defeated. I feel sad. It was somewhat underwhelming, but it was nothing less than the truth. Because of Lillian? That's right. I... I'm scared. I'm scared of going back to St. Mary's and being alone in my room again, with nothing to do. No hope at all. No reason to get out of bed. I... I don't want that to happen again. I don't want to languish in despair, even though I do it so often. I really, truly don't. I want to get better, but... How can I get better without Lillian? Silly. But Bobby... Roberta smiled. Whoa! Music change here! Dimples appearing in her cheeks. Her hair gathered up about her face and tied together with strips of paper, slightly tussled from sleeping, really did make her look much younger. Her pajamas didn't help. With that teasing expression, that wicked glint in her eyes, she could have been the 11-year-old Roberta once more, with the black strappy shoes and the school bag that was too big for her. You won't be alone. You still have me, and I will not leave you. We have been friends since we were children, and that will not change, even though in less than a year we will become adults. I'll stay with you. You need somebody to watch out for you. Heaven knows what foolish things you'll get up to on your own. But, Lily, forget her. I, I can't. Then don't. But if you ever feel you miss her too much, please tell me. I'll be there, just like I was when we were young. Things are never nearly as bad as you believe them to be, Sam. No matter how you feel, you're not alone. I won't go anywhere. I promise. Boom, Roberta in here to save the day. Oh, that's it! That's it! <laughs> wow. Um, did not expect it to end right there. Um, wow. Um, wow, okay. So everything went perfectly. Um,. They'll work on it, just kind of how you work on it. That's... It ended so abruptly, but it is wrapped up so nicely. Oh, look, there's Roberta with the barriers again. Um... Man, I wanted to play it more, but... Yeah, that, that wraps up the story. Everything's good. Um... Damn. Uh, Roberta's the super friend. Then they'll work out the problems and keep on living. Well, that's a great ending. I'm glad I got that one. Well, we'll just roll through the rest of these credits here. I'll be quiet so we can enjoy the song. Then I'll see you guys next time.